Good morning. My name is Monica with Canadian Business Chicks. We connect professionals and entrepreneurs with a passion for business and profit. And today we are really, really excited to welcome Viola. Viola is a founder and CEO of VH Marketing, and she is going to discuss with us a little bit about her business, how what her journey was, and chat about the SEO. SEO is huge, huge, huge for anybody that's on the internet. Of course, everybody is. So we're going to dive into that a little bit. But before I introduce um, and, and open up the floor to Viola, I just want to give you a little bit of a background. I have had her send me a little bit of a stage bio so I can just really clearly articulate Viola's background. So Viola is the owner of VH Marketing, an online marketing agency in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. She is passionate about helping small business owners make sense of their ever-changing and sometimes, sometimes frustrating world of online marketing. Her specialty is search engine optimization, which is SEO, focusing on achieving a profitable overall web presence on her for her clients. Viola is also active in Calgary's immigrant community, mentoring, translating, and speaking. Welcome. Welcome today. I would I'm, I'm just excited about this conversation because there's so much information to share and looking forward to just diving in deep. Uh, so if I can just have you in about three sentences, I, I there was a little bit of a, you know, an overall view about, you know, you and your business, but how did you get started into this world of SEO? Like how many years have you been in it? When did you start your journey? If you can just share a little bit about that. So in 2009, early 2009, um, a friend of mine who owned a commercial cleaning company asked me to build him his website because he had just paid somebody and uh, there was nothing was happening. So that's how I started building websites and I, I really enjoyed the process. I enjoyed the results. But then I was looking at um, how come, how come his website now is not to be found? Where is it? I built it, all this work, and it's not showing up anywhere. So I didn't know about search right. engine optimization then. And that's how I started looking and digging and digging and found the world of search engine optimization. And it's kind of aligned uh, with what I did previously. I was a systems analyst at Shell Canada. And mm -hmm. um, so systems are my, were my world and are my world. So that's how I started looking into and learning. I spent countless hours and lots of money and courses and still doing it because this is a, a living thing. This is not something that you do once and then you forget about it. It's a constant, yes. constant uh, process. So that's that's how I started uh, my business and that's how I started, um, go, that's how I went into search engine optimization. So let's just think back to how many years ago that was, if you can. So that was 2002? So that was seven years ago. Okay. So seven years ago. And now, I mean, I just know from, you know, seeing the online presence and sort of Facebook, how it's growing and, you know, everything, how it's just exploded. So the when you thought about, you know, focusing on SEO and website, when did that transition take place? So you're building websites. So when did that transition take place where you're really, really focused on that SEO piece of your business? Ah, good question. Um, so probably around 2000, just uh, probably around 2010, 11, around there that I okay. started. And what I started doing is... Um, also changing my business model because just building websites, it's uh, not a steady income. It's really, you always have right. to look and chase for, for, for the next new customer. And uh, this gave me, uh, doing uh, SEO for clients monthly gave me a steady income so um, I can I stabilize my business really. And it helped the clients. So let me ask you a question. So, you know, just to, being really new to SEO and you know that whole world, so on a monthly basis, what can what can somebody accept to our uh, expect to see in like a month? Like what would what would that be? What would that involve? Like do you, some people say, okay, I've got SEO and I'm done. 
Is that it? Or what is what needs to be done on a continuous basis for that to somebody that has no idea about that world? So if you can just say, walk us through like baby step through why you would do it and what kind of maintenance is required. Okay, so so let's say Monica that you approach me and you say, Well, I think I need SEO. I'm not sure what it is. What is it? How how can we go forward? So then then what I'll do, I'll sit down with you. I have a one hour free consultation and yes. see what would you like to achieve, okay? What and then talk to just show you a few things on how it works so you get at least a little bit familiar with what SEO is and how it's working or not working for you right now. <laughs> and um, then from there, let's say, okay, say, okay, I want to hire you. Uh, I will ask for at least a six-month commitment because SEO is a slow process. It also lasts, so it's, it's worth it. Uh, and actually, my clients have been with me for years, so six months is a minimum, really. Uh, and mm-hmm. I never hold anybody, like if you want to bail out in one month, I don't care, you can go. So I never hold anybody to that, but I suggest that we do so you see results. So the first step is keyword research. And even okay. before building a website, if I'm the one building a website, I will start with that because everything online, everything, I mean everything is keywords. So, okay, so so that's what's first step. Okay, so and keywords as to everything on your website or your content, other people's content, what does that relate to? So and, how and do you want to be found? So let's say I'm searching uh, for, you know, some, for simplicity sake, I'm searching for a plumber in Calgary. So what okay. kind of words do people use? So I use different tools to find that out. One of the, the, the tools that anybody, you guys can use it too, is Google Keyword Planner. It's free and it's a, a Google yes. database of people, uh, you know, searching. And Google keeps that data and categorizes it and it's in this Keyword Planner tool. Now you can see, okay, um, Calgary Plumber, I don't know, they are, 500 searches per month in Calgary and it's high competition and it's it's, high competition means difficult to to rank. So then you go to an easier one maybe to start with. So maybe it would be, um, I don't know, uh, plumber, uh, best Calgary, best plumber in Calgary is uh, southeast or Douglasdale or something. Be like more that. specific with yes. your search. Yes. Okay. So more words, not just Calgary plumber. Um, okay. Because in all honesty, people use that a lot too. So it, they put more words than just two. So you don't just say right. Calgary dentist. So if you live in Mackenzie Lake, then you put down Calgary uh, dentist Mackenzie Lake or something like that. So I start okay. with keyword research. I'll show you that research. And then we kind of agree, okay, these are the words we're going to go start with because it's a process, continuous. I mean, you should be ranking for hundreds of keywords, ideally, right? <laughs> so what does ranking right. mean? Maybe you'll ask. That means... Great, right. that's a great question. What is yeah. ranking? <laughs> <laughs> I get that question. And that means when, uh, when you're... The person who is looking for your services or your product is, look, uh, is searching online... First of all, it's going to search on Google. That's what the a point of mine. They're not going to search on, on uh, Facebook. They're going to search on Google. So they're going to put in, and you yourself do the same thing. You put in certain words. So you put in a string of words, and some results come up. And you go page one, maybe you look down, and maybe page two. I doubt it if you go to page three. So if you're really, mm-hmm. really interested, and you can find right. what you're looking for, you might. So that's what the ranking means, that you're going to show up in those first few pages, or at least three. So, um, okay. yeah. So ranking is really important to be seen. How do you get on the top? <laughs> How do you get on the top? Climbing, by climbing. <laughs> like, can it be achieved without SEO? Um. So, or is that what SEO are. is, really, 
because SEO has uh, many components. I'm going to just list them now so you know. Uh, okay. SEO is, so keyword research. The next one is... I'm going to write this down. Yeah. Keyword research. Yeah. The next yeah. one is competition analysis. And so keyword research, competition analysis, and after that is on-page SEO, and then off-page SEO. And off-page? Yes. Yeah, so okay. on-page means it's on your website. We do stuff with your website, with the content of your site. Okay. With the tags and with header, you know. Uh, different links and stuff within your site. The off page is that's the big beast. So that could that's um, oh. that's mail that's mainly what I do monthly. After the first three steps are done, then that's the off page and, and it entails a whole bunch of things. You can't do them all at once and it takes time. So just if you think about what is the web and why do they call the internet the web? Because it, it's a web. Like, you're the spider, let's say, okay? Your website is the spider. You have to uh, we, uh, weave a web around your website. Because if you just yes. have a spider, will not survive. It just has no web around it. So those right. the webs are, are the points, the links coming to your website from all sorts of direction, from social media, from review sites, from local directories, from classified ads, from so that's linking from other websites. Okay. So you're building, you're weaving that web like a little spider. <laughs> okay. To to um, have that presence. So uh, that's the off offline SEO in plain terms, I guess, and uh, that that takes a lot of time because uh, it's a lot of avenues. So ideally, what someone would do when they're starting off is just go first, number one, get a consultation and, and yeah. find out, you know, where you are at and where you want to go. And if you don't know where you want where you want to go, ask the experts, because sometimes I think people go, I, I don't know. Right. So sometimes you have to come with all of the tools in your toolbox. Um, but number one, um, have that consultation with you, find out what your objectives are and come up with a plan, I think. Right. Yes, uh, so it doesn't you said it doesn't happen overnight. And I think that's the myth is that you do SEO and poof, magically, it, it just starts to happen for you. So, I mean, you have to be able to track it. Of course, you have to have some analytics in place so, so that you actually know if it's working. Um, which is really interesting. So how long can somebody expect to see results from just starting to sort of incorporate and beef up their SEO? So it depends on the industry because some industries are extremely competitive. Like one okay. of them would be, uh, I know I had a mortgage broker and, and uh, as a client and <sighs> Then you're competing with the banks. You're competing with big mortgage uh, corporations who throw in literally tens of thousands of dollars at this. So the small, board, okay. you know, independent mortgage broker cannot afford that. Uh, but mm. you can still do some stuff. And my client did get uh, leads off the internet. Um, but maybe I have to tell you, it was from YouTube. <laughs> okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and uh, just as a side note, YouTube is owned by Google, and anything that Google owns, Google prefers. So, if you uh, put your videos and optimize them just a little bit, at least have a link back to your website, um, you will get a little bit more traction than the average. So, there are a lot of things that the do-it-yourselfer uh, can do, or, or people with low budget can do themselves or or maybe they have somebody in the office who has a few hours or they can hire uh, uh, VH marketing uh, or maybe a, a lower package because I have three different packages. So as long as you're doing something, you're ahead of, of I would say, at least 50% of 
the, the businesses because a lot of businesses do nothing, which is just blows my mind. And then they okay. say, well, internet marketing is not working. Well, you're not doing it. Or you don't even know what you don't know. I think that's the biggest piece here. And I think that's why this conversation is really important is you don't know what you don't know. And um, we just had Margo join us. So hello, Margo for joining us today um we're talking about oh and landing pages is really important as well so um what is your thought on landing page was that a question margo it's just for keyword search absolutely are you in the business of website developments margo or what is your business do you want to how many is the right number okay hey margo we're going to open it up anybody want to jump on we've got probably about three minutes so i thought we'd open it up Anybody want to jump on on a call and and chat with Viola? I'll open up a seat if you'd like to jump on because it's kind of fun if anybody's ready. <laughs> no. Okay. No. So that's okay. Next time, just know that I do. I oh yes. Okay. Fantastic. So I'm going to accept Margo. Hi. Hi. Good morning, Margo. How, how are, are you? you guys? Good. And where are you calling from? I'm calling from? from Austin, Texas. Wow. Oh my goodness. Cool. One of my favorite cities in the entire world. I swear. Is, I love Austin. It is a, a great city. I've been here for 20 years and um, oh. it just keeps getting better all the time unless you don't own real estate. <laughs> well, anyway, it's a fabulous it city. I miss the uh, Cedar Creek with the hula hut and all that great yes, stuff. Yes. Love, love yes. it. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you for joining us today. So you had some questions for Viola about sort of landing pages yeah. and for the keywords and how many is the right number. So are you able to answer that question for us today, Viola? What is the question for you? Like, oh, <clears throat> well, so I've done, um, my background is marketing and sales and a lot of it's been digital marketing. Um, and I know that from trial and error with SEO, um, and SEM, that SEO is what makes the most sense. SEM, pay-per-click is just wildly inexpensive, uh, wildly expensive and ineffective is what I found. But SEO is so complicated and it's laborious and tedious. So my, I know that, that a good best practice is have a landing page for each of your keywords, but that could be like hundreds. So my question is, what's the right number? What's the, or, or a guideline of you should have 20 or you should have a thousand, you know? Um, so the way I would look at this, I would say, okay, what are you promoting right now? What is more important to you right now in your business? Yep. And focus on, from, on, on creating landing pages for keywords that, that attract whatever you're selling. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Right now. Right. Okay. And because landing chip is not it's not like you have to create uh, 500 landing pages and then you're done. The way my approach would be is whatever you're doing now, let's start working on concentrating on that and always measure. So as as Monica said, go to Google Analytics, see what works. For one product, I would create probably two landing pages and and test them. Which one works better? Something like that. Right, right. Okay, that's, that's very, very helpful. Yeah, I, you know, there's so many things you can focus on. How do you choose the ones that are going to give you the biggest yeah, thing? Yeah, just choose something. <laughs> just something. Because then it can drive you crazy, yeah. Another question I have is if you have a landing page tool that you like to use. I have used HubSpot before when I was on the customer side of things, um, and that's not really cost-effective for small business, super small business, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, there's with everything, there's lots of choices on the internet for everything. <laughs> uh, what I found that's easier to use is lead pages. Lead pages? Okay. Yes. It's, um, <laughs> Life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have uh, lots of different uh, templates for different scenarios, and it's easy to install. It, it hooks up with many of your. Uh, Email marketing uh, software, so I think it's easy to integrate, and I would use that. Okay. Did I take you off? And I'm not getting paid from that, just to let you know. Just no, I, <laughs> this this is what's interesting because some of those questions that come in are burning questions that people have that 
we may or may not have or that we may not have covered. Mm -hmm. And there's so many questions. This is such a very, very large, large topic. So no, we, we welcome the door and thank you for joining us. That's lovely. Oh, thanks for thank having you, me. It's really and, 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 and I'm gonna tweet this out and say, thanks for joining us from Austin. Ready, ladies, smile. <laughs> Oh, just because we can have some Why not? Fun. Why not? Anyways, I know. We, we got to have fun. If we're, you know, you, I think if you don't have fun, you better switch jobs. I agree totally. Right? I agree totally. We do yeah. too much yeah. of yeah. our day doing it to, for it to not be fun. You know what? And, and if you're on passion, it's really not like you're doing work anyways. I know that there's lots of work to be done, but if you're on passion and you're on purpose, then it, it's, it's fun. Yeah regardless so thank you for joining us that was lovely and we do this every tuesday morning at nine o'clock mountain standard time so please um come join us again margo and we have we interview entrepreneurs and just share their story their journey and really just share about the business that they're working on uh, i do have a couple more questions for you viola and i know that i i captured a little bit on the seo i want to say thank you for sharing that there's so much to know and if people need to reach out to you and connect out to you more um, about search engine optimization they can follow you on twitter connect up with you at vh marketing and i'm sure you'd be more than happy to connect up with them and i don't need to live in calgary i mean yeah. like we see here you're from austin texas <laughs> right yeah. so um thank goodness for the world wide web That's right great. um because it really just open doors and communications like just like the person across the street having coffee so um you know well i just want to sort of say that I, I'd like to sort of dive into a little bit more before we kind of cut the day today about how you balance family and life because I know that for women own businesses I know this is a question I have to ask everybody and it's really important because I, I I find that it's helpful to share your story and go hey you're not the only one or hey this is what I do somebody takes nuggets of information that I help and support them on their journey so when you first started into the world of you know going from a corporate job into you know, running your own business. How was that transition and how has it been since that till now? Have you seen a progression of balancing your family and life? Has it changed? Um, well, to start off with, when, when I started my business, and I'm sure I'm not unique in this one, uh, it was an uphill battle <laughs> for sure. It was difficult. So for this first year and a half, uh, many times I thought, what am I doing? Let's go back to work. <laughs> and, uh, but that's been in the past. So, I, you know, I, I overcame that. Balancing um, family and personal life with business is, is not easy. So the way I do it, um, I guess I'm lucky in a way because I can work pretty much anywhere. And uh, that's good and bad. The good thing is that I can do that. The bad thing is I go on vacation, I go whatever, Europe, the States, wherever I am, I'm pretty much always working. Right. <laughs> so, well, maybe not as much as I would at home, obviously. But uh, so that's very difficult. So only one time in the seven years that I took seven days off, I promised we went to Bahamas and I said I will not bring any electronic device and I will wow. not touch anything. And that was about a year and a half ago. I, I'm gonna and give you an applause for that. Congratulations. That is incredibly hard to do. Yes. Lots to live on that one. And really, those are things that we need to talk about because we need to unplug in order to yeah. save ourselves yeah. for building our businesses. Yeah, but the hotel had a bloody computer. So it was really hard not to go. I would just pass by and look at it and rush. It's just like, <laughs> no, no, I'm not touching you. <laughs> Good for you. And what about um, you? You have a you have a um, children. So how how have you incorporated you know keeping those relationships alive with your family when you're you know focused on building that business? How has that been for you? Um, most of the time, if there is an emergency, I mean emergency. Um, I, I drop everything. Family is most important. Yes. And um, other than that, it's a, it's a mesh because it's not like going to an office and, okay, I'm here at 8 and I'm leaving at 5 and then it's it's so such a mesh. I could be 
um, I don't know, babysitting for two hours during so-called office hours. For I have a grandson, he's three. Uh, and then working at 11 o'clock at night. So it works for me. And whatever feels good for you, that's what you should do. I have to do this to, this is okay. So at, at the end, it works out. <laughs> So everybody has their own recipe, I think. Um, Margo, do you have kids? I do. I have teenagers. I have a 15-year-old, oh. 17-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. So they need more attention rather than less attention. And it needs to be different. You know, it's a real challenge. Um, they, I have a daughter and a son. And yes. um, they have their activities. And um, it's very interesting. Recently, my son went to, who's 17, he's a junior in high school, he went to uh, Camp Enterprise, which is a weekend-long, highly intensive, Rotary Club-sponsored business camp, entrepreneur camp. And it was, Wow, for kids, that's fantastic. I know, isn't it? And he was sort of like, I don't know what I want to do, what I don't want to do. I make a terrible social worker. I have no empathy. You know, we knew that about him. <laughs> so he, he, uh, he, they did a personality assessment, and he was part Oprah Winfrey, part Donald Trump. <laughs> Oh my, that is the quite Winfrey. the combination. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what was interesting was the first, this is the first time I've ever heard him say anything um, that remotely reflected respect for my profession Aww. or my achievements. I mean, not in a bad way, just, you know, they're selfish. They don't, you know, they're not, they're not focused on, on us. But he heard a story about um, e-commerce and he heard... Um, and I don't remember what it was or even who was speaking, but what he said was, well, then I remembered, well, my mother ran the website for Dell, so that can't be true, whatever it was. And I thought, oh, he remembered a thing I did and that it was a pretty oh, good job. Wow. And, you know, he was impressed by it. And it was years ago. I mean, I stopped when uh, his sister was born. I, I took 10 years out, um, you know, to raise kids because at the time, Dell and a lot of other companies were not super family friendly. And um, so I, I took time off and then I restarted my career a few years ago. But it is, it's rewarding to see that. Absolutely. Uh, and, and they're really, they've become pretty respectful of, we got to juggle. And like, like you said, do you say your name Viola? Like this? Viola. Oh, that's very pretty. Um, like Viola said, uh, there are times when the family takes the front seat and there's times when you have to say, sorry, family, I can't do both things. I got to be over here. Well, that's okay. You came to the last four basketball games, so you can skip this one. So it is a yeah, there's, a, there's, there's, a there's a balance and there's a trade off and there's an understanding, but when they see you working hard, yeah. Yeah. that those things and those traits, and I think your daughter's working with you now. Yeah. Um, yeah. right with your business, oh, yeah. they yeah. understand yeah. what it is that you're doing and they see that hard work. And I think it just gives them a little extra, right? I mean, those are the foundation and those principles that when they get out in there, it's going to be like hard work. You have to work for what you believe in. Nothing just comes. I mean, sure. Mm -hmm. It's great when things just happen and they happen naturally and they come very easily, but you know, the um, satisfaction comes with hard work. It does. It does. I truly believe that. So if we can teach that to our kids, that's a true blessing. It is. And speaking of a mashup, I have a eight week old puppy that needs to go out right now. So, <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining us. We'll I see you again. It. I'll check back with you next week. Okay. Sounds great. Have a great Bye. day. Bye. -bye. Thanks Margo. Okay, so that was a little bit of everything today. Um, Jean had to go. She's um, signed off. But thank you so much for sharing about SEO, about your journey, talking about work-life balance. Um, before you go, I just have a couple little rapid-fire questions. Are you okay with it? Sure. Okay, let's fire off. Where did you grow up? Ah, I grew up in Transylvania. And it is a real place. Wow. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I was born and raised in Transylvania. It is Romania today. It's a region. And honestly, I never heard about Dracula till I left the country. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> well, that's something new. I never knew that about you, but that is really super cool. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so Transylvania, Romania, lovely. Uh, favorite book? Um, I like historical novels, and one of my favorites is Shogun, James Clavell. Okay, interesting. Do you have a favorite business book that you're reading right now at all? 
or there's no well, time to read? A, it's more like a self. Um, um, is the four agreements? Mikael oh, would love the four, four agreements. agreements. Yeah, that's what I'm reading right now. Oh, fantastic! Short, yeah, it's short one, but punchy one. Oh, that's fantastic! I love those little nuggets because I, I always like to find out what everybody's sort of dip, diving into right now, and sort of as they're plugging in on, on business or building their business, I, I find that a really interesting fact to find. Uh, and of course, your your favorite social platform. I'm curious. Platform. You probably know, but uh, for everybody else, it's, like it's Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Yes, I know. I love Twitter as well. Twitter is one of my favorites. <laughs> you can get it out yeah. there, 140 characters, and it goes yes. quite a ways, very right? Fast. Very, very fast. Yeah, and as we see here, even it's connected through Blab, it's connected through to so many other, um, you know, platforms that really, if you're on Twitter, that opens the doors to everything else. So I, I just actually gave some advice to a woman last night, and she's um, an executive with, with an oil company, and she's not on Twitter. And I said, the best advice I can give you about that is go home grab a Twitter handle, and even if you do not plan to use it, just grab it because it's yours, you'll own it, nobody can take it away from you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that was my best advice. You don't have to do anything with it until you're ready, but just go grab that handle. Anyways, um, your favorite season? It's the fall. Uh, oh. which is, I, yeah, it's the fall, and there are a few reasons, but you don't the main reason is it's it, well a couple of main ones I guess. Um, it's not cold yet. The colors yes. are beautiful, and there are no bugs. Oh, right, <laughs> right. I forget the fact that we have bugs all summer. Some yeah. somehow I just you know I'm like all about the sunshine and and you know they like being long and all that sort of stuff. I forget about those nasty little bugs, but I love fall as well. It's a beautiful time of year. That's lovely, and the bugs. <laughs> Thank goodness we don't live in Winnipeg. Uh, the bugs are in Winnipeg. Um, passion. What's your passion? My passion is to encourage people. I like to to see them believe in themselves, and and uh, so it doesn't matter if it's just on personal level or it's on business level or any kind of relationship. It's uh, you know what? There's always hope. There's always should look at the bright side and concentrate on that and focus on that and and I love doing that so that that's what I do when I go and talk to immigrants too it's just because um, I want I'm one of them but I've been here for quite a while so encouraging and giving hope well I think that's beautiful and I think that sort of translates into your business as well right because you have you deal very closely with your clients and building that relationship mm -hmm. so Wanting the best for somebody and seeing them succeed is really important when you're a business owner. So that's fabulous. And especially welcoming the immigrants, right? Because you've been there, done that. So yeah, yeah. you know exactly the walk and how hard it was for you. So that's a beautiful thing to be able to share that. Now, I'm not, I, I'm going to say favorite destination, but I already have a feeling that it, I already know what it might be. <laughs> a beach without a computer, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I just like to travel, uh, but in the winter, my f so depends on the season. The winter would be um, somewhere hot, so Mexico. Um, usually in the spring, I like to go to Europe. Yes. Not in the summer. It's way too hot in the summer. Good advice. Good tip. Yeah. Good tip. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay, so I know where to find you year-round. Are you logging in from Europe or are you logging in from the beach? <laughs> That's fabulous. And I think that we should definitely be able to, to work from wherever we want to. Um, so do you have a power song? A song that you, when you're driving no, in the car, I that you don't. just like, do you have a favorite power like song? Music. No, I don't. No? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Classical music. Oh, yeah. I like Vivaldi. So, yeah. Okay. So, that I is like power music. And, yes. The, the Seasons by Vivaldi. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. See, I, I always know, because when somebody says they don't have a power song, 
Yeah, you do have a power song, but it might be in the form of a classical music. And I find that there's, I think you remember um, last year, our woman of inspiration, Diane, She her power song was this really deep, deep classical piece, and it had a deep meaning to it um, that was attached to her mom. So it was her power song, but it wasn't like a Beyonce song. It was a really, yeah. really wonderful classical piece that had a deep meaning to it. So I always like to ask, ask that question because it's different for everybody. Um, okay, and I'm just going to ask, uh, who is your woman of inspiration? We have woman of inspiration coming up October 1st in Calgary. There's nominees coming in, and just a reminder to, you know, for those of us uh, you watching, to nominate a woman of inspiration on Canadian Business Chicks website, canadianbusinesschicks.com, to nominate. But who would be your woman of inspiration? So are you asking in Calgary or in the world? You know, I'm just going to open it up to to who that woman is to you. So that could be anywhere. It's Oprah. Oprah? It's not, I yeah. love Oprah. It might sound cliche, but it is Oprah. You know what? I went to see Oprah in Calgary, and I actually took <laughs> Diane. I do love Oprah. She's an amazing woman. I think she's just a true thought leader, and, yeah, she's, a, she's an amazing woman. So I agree. Hands down. Um... And I just, one more question. I cannot live without my blank. It's the laptop. <laughs> you were, <laughs> the laptop. <laughs> how about, how about the mobile phone? Your no, phone. because see, my eyesight is uh, kind of going. <laughs> so it's too small. I do a lot of stuff on the phone, obviously, but I prefer a laptop. I'm more comfortable on, on that. Well, fantastic. So I, we're a little bit over time today. We had a little technical glitches. I, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. I did make some notes on sort of um, in the back here on how to, you know, what are the first four tips that you would, um, and if we could just run through those, the, the first four tips, like if somebody was interested in SEO, number one, contact someone who knows what they're talking about. So contact yourself right? A VH marketing, that would be the first step. Um, know what it is that you want to do. Focus on your keywords, right? Was yes, the next one is your keywords. Start, you have to start there. You have to know yeah. what you, you want to dive into. And then you would do your, um, from keywords, then it was your landing pages. Yeah, you have, it's on page I see. On page. Yeah. Then your Just, off page. And the off page, and then you should have Google Analytics and and uh, Google Webmaster in there, so you know how you're doing. Right. You can track. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much again. It was fantastic having you. Love to have the chat, and hopefully, we'll have you back again. So um, we're going to sign off. Is there any other questions for anyone else? Marianne, thank you for joining us again today, and we look forward to welcoming you back to the show next Tuesday morning at nine o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And until then, have a fantastic week and follow us all on Twitter. See you again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.